Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Physics Infinity. In our series of geometrical optics, our next article is the effect of translation and translation matrix. Now, what is translation? A ray of light is said to undergo translation operation when it travels in the same medium. That is, medium change nahi hota hai. Now consider a cylindrical symmetric optical system and consider a ray of light traveling from point P to point Q in the refract medium of refractive index mu. Okay? Let alpha 1 be the angle of inclination at point P and alpha 2 be the angle of inclination at this point Q. Now in translation operation, ray travels in a straight line in a homogeneous medium that is this angle alpha 1 is equal to angle alpha 2 say equal to angle alpha now the coordinates of point p are y1 comma mu1 alpha 1 or mu alpha 1 and the coordinates of point q are y2 comma mu alpha 2 please exchange these two coordinates here y1 comma lambda 1 and y2 comma lambda 2 now this lambda 1 will be equal to mu alpha 1 and lambda 2 is equal to mu alpha 2. Now this y1 and this y2 these are the perpendicular distances of this point P and point Q respectively from this axis of the system. That is this is y1 and this Q to the axis is y2. Now we see that this y2 is equal to this Q n plus this distance that is equal to y1 only therefore we can write that y2 is equal to qn plus y1 or y1 plus qn here we have written this now in this triangle p q and n this qn is equal to uh, uh, or we can say that this qn can be found out like the from the pythagoras theorem that the tangent of this angle alpha 1 is equal to perpendicular upon base that is q n upon p n is equal to tangent alpha 1 or from here we can find out that q n is equal to this p n into tangent alpha 1. Now because the angles are very very small in paraxial systems therefore this tangent alpha 1 is nearly equal to alpha 1. Or we can say that Qn is equal to Pn into alpha 1. Now this Pn, this Pn is equal to this distance that is defined as capital D. Therefore, sorry, Qn is equal to D into alpha 1. Putting this value here in this equation, we get y2 is equal to y1 plus qn that is y2 is equal to y1 plus d alpha 1 say this is equation number th 3 here also we have lambda 1 is equal to mu alpha 1 and lambda 2 is equal to mu alpha 2 also alpha 1 and alpha 2 are equal therefore this implies that this lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 say this is equation number 4 now from equation number 3 again we have y2 is equal to y1 plus d alpha 1 multiply and divide by mu here and we get d upon mu into mu alpha 1 put mu alpha 1 is equal to lambda 1 lambda 1 from here and we get y2 is equal to y1 plus d upon mu into lambda 1 say this is equation number 5 now we will rewrite these equations equation number 4 and equation number 5 in a particular manner lambda 2 is equal to 1 into lambda 1 and there is no term of y1 therefore 0 into y1 equation number 6 and similarly this equation number 5 y2 is equal to d upon mu into lambda 1 plus 1 into y1 here equation number 7 so these two equations are our resultive equations and this can be written in the matrix form like this y2 uh, sorry lambda 2 y2 is equal to the product of two matrices the first one is written as the 
coefficients of this lambda 1 and y1 in these two equations are written as it is in this matrix that is 1 0 1 0 d upon mu and 1 j upon mu and 1 and the second matrix is this lambda 1 and y1 when we multiply uh, when we open this product of matrices we get the same two equations like this here okay here this two cross two order matrix is called the translation matrix denoted by capital t is equal to one zero d upon mu and one this is a two cross two order translation matrix also if we find out the determinant of this matrix then we get 1 minus 0 equal to 1 that is the determinant of the translation matrix is always equal to 1. Here this y2 uh, sorry lambda 2 y2 matrix is called the output matrix and this lambda 1 y1 matrix is called the input matrix and this is the translation matrix. Okay? So this is the translation matrix. Okay. Next is the effect of refraction and the refraction matrix. Now what is refraction? A ray of light is said to undergo the refraction operation when it travels from one medium to the another medium that is the change of medium takes place here. Okay? For this let us consider a spherical refracting surface of radius of curvature capital R and let mu1 and mu2 be the refractive indices of these two media. Okay? PQ is the incident ray, QS is the refracted ray. This angle I is the angle of incidence and this angle R is the angle of refraction. This NQC is the normal to this, refract, uh, to this spherical refracting surface at this point Q. Okay. This line is a ray or is a line parallel to this axis and therefore this angle is alpha 1 and this angle is alpha 2 that the incident ray and the refracted ray makes with the axis of the system. Now, using the Snell's law here, the pro, a law of the refraction, we get sin i upon sin r is equal to mu2 upon mu1 and again in the paraxial rays, for the paraxial rays, angles are very small, therefore sin i is near, nearly equal to i and sin r is nearly equal to r. Therefore, from this very first equation, we get i upon r is equal to mu2 upon mu1 or we can write i into mu1 is equal to r into mu2. Say this is equation number second. Now, what are the values of this i and r? From here, we get this capital, um, this angle i is equal to theta plus alpha 1 and this angle r is equal to theta plus angle alpha 2. Now we can write this like this angle i is equal to alpha 1 plus theta and angle r is equal to alpha 2 plus theta. Now in triangle QMC this is our triangle QMC. In this triangle this angle is also theta because this line and this line are parallel this is a transversal ray and therefore these two angles will be equal. Therefore, this angle is also equal to theta and in this triangle Q, M and C, in this triangle Q, M, C, tangent of angle theta is equal to perpendicular Q, M by base M, C and this M, C is nearly equal to this O, C that is equal to capital R and therefore we get Tangent of theta is equal to QM upon MC that is Y2 upon R. This QM is equal to Y2 or equal to Y1. Both the things are equal. Y1 in the first medium and Y2 in the second medium. But this QM is equal to Y2 1 or Y2 that is Y1 is equal to Y2 here. And therefore we can write tangent of theta is equal to y2 upon r and again tangent theta nearly equals to theta because angles are very small in the paraxial systems therefore this y2 upon r is equal to theta or theta is equal to y2 upon r that is equal to y1 upon r say this is equation number 5. Now from equations 2, 3 and 4 these are the equations 2, 3 and 4 i mu1 is equal to r mu2 
putting the values of this i and this r from this equation number 3 and equation number 4 we get alpha 1 plus theta into mu 1 is equal to alpha 2 plus theta into mu 2 we have written it here ठीक है यहां से हम लोग वैल्यू फाइंड आउट करते हैं mu 2 into alpha 2 की this is alpha 2 into mu 2 keeping this aside we get from in the to the other side alpha 1 into mu 1 mu 1 alpha 1 plus mu 1 theta plus mu 1 theta and minus mu 2 theta ठीक है mu 1 alpha 1 minus common mu 2 minus mu 1 into theta multiply uh, sorry putting the value of theta from this equation y1 upon r here we get mu1 alpha1 minus mu2 minus mu1 upon r into y1 say this quantity is equal to p mu2 minus mu1 upon r b equal to small p and this equation will be mu2 alpha2 is equal to mu1 alpha1 minus p y1 now mu2 alpha2 is equal to lambda2 and mu1 alpha1 is equal to lambda1 therefore we get lambda2 this lambda2 is equal to mu1 alpha1 that is lambda1 minus p y1 so this is equation number 6 here this p mu2 minus mu1 upon r is called the power of the refracting surface okay also we know that this y2 and y1 are equal therefore y2 is equal to y1 now rewriting these equations this y2 is equal to y1 equation and this equation number 6 we get lambda 2 is equal to 1 into lambda 1 plus minus of p into y1 okay from equation number 6 and from this equation we get y2 is equal to here is no term of lambda 1 therefore 0 into lambda 1 plus 1 into y1 say so this is equation number 8 and these two equations are the resultant equations in matrix form we can write these equations as, as y2 sorry lambda 2 y2 is equal to again these coefficients as it is 1 minus p 0 and 1 1 minus p 0 and 1 into the other matrix lambda 1 y1 lambda 1 y1 here this is the output matrix lambda 2 y2 lambda 1 y1 is the input matrix similar to the first article and this matrix 1 minus p 0 1 this is called the refraction matrix this is a 2 cross 2 order matrix again its determinant is equal to 1 minus 0 that is equal to 1 okay so this is it about the refraction matrix now next is the system matrix now we have this that बहुत सारी स्फेरिकल रिफ्रैक्टिंग सरफेसेस एक साथ है या कोई थिक लेंस है वहां पर बहुत सारी स्फेरिकल रिफ्रैक्टिंग सरफेसेस होंगी अब उसमें क्या होगा मेनी टाइम्स ट्रांसलेशन एंड मेनी टाइम्स रिफ्रैक्शन विल टेक प्लेस देयर दैट वी कांट काउंट और दैट इज नॉट इजी टू काउंट दैट दोस नंबर ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन प्रोसेसेस देयर देयरफॉर वी डिफाइन अ सिस्टम मैट्रिक्स फॉर सच अ केस now this system matrix represented by capital S is defined as B minus A minus D C. Its determinant is B C minus A D. Now because this S matrix is in general the product of the translation and the refraction, refraction matrices and therefore and also the determinant of the translation matrix and refraction matrix are always 1 therefore the determinant of the matrix as system matrix is also equal to 1 okay therefore from here bc minus ad that is the determinant of this matrix s is equal to 1 so this is the system matrix and this is used where we uh, can't count or it is not easy to count the number of translation and the refraction phenomena there okay in that cases in those cases this system matrix is used okay so this is it about the translation matrix refraction matrix and the system matrix all the three matrices have always have determinant equal to one only okay hope you like our videos keep watching our videos thank you